Today, the U.S. imposed new sanctions on Iran in response to Tehran's unprecedented attack last weekend on Israel. The U.S. is also vetoing an attempt in the U.N. Security Council to create an independent Palestinian state. All this as Israel continues to debate how and when to respond to Iran's attack. Nick Schifrin looks at the U.S.'s attempt to prevent even more regional escalation. William, this afternoon, President Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's top national security aides talked about Israel's potential response to the Iranian attack. U.S. officials have made it clear they think Israel should not respond militarily and are trying to increase economic and diplomatic pressure on Iran to help make their case. For the lay of the land in the U.S. and the region, we get two views. Ambassador Dennis Ross played leading roles in the Mideast peace process for more than 12 years. He is now the counselor and a distinguished fellow at the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, a Washington think tank. And Khaled Al-Gindi has participated in past Israeli-Palestinian negotiations and is now the director of the Middle East Institute's program on Palestine and Israeli-Palestinian affairs. Thanks very much. Welcome, both of you, to the news hour. Ambassador Ross, let me start with you, and let's start in New York. The U.S. is vetoing a resolution that would have allowed the state of Palestine to join the U.N. as a full member. U.S. allies and fellow permanent members, the United Kingdom, uh, is abstaining and France is voting in favor. What's your response to those votes? Well, I'm not surprised that the Biden administration is going to veto it. I think they look at this as uh, not just a symbolic move, but at this point, the Palestinians don't look like a state, uh, and so I don't think they're prepared to recognize it as such in a UN context. I also think they see this as not necessarily connected to the diplomacy that they're engaged in right now with the Saudis. They clearly still have an interest in trying to reach a Saudi-Israeli normalization deal. I think they're negotiating exactly what that might mean, not only in terms of bilateral U.S.-Saudi issues in terms of defense treaty, uh, the Saudi development of a, a nuclear civilian nuclear industry. But I think they're also talking about what would the Palestinian component of this understanding be? What would the Israelis have to do in terms of recognizing some kind of, of move or commitment towards Palestinian statehood? I think while they're negotiating that, they're not interested in having a symbolic move at the Security Council. Khaled al Gindi, what's your response to the U.S. vote in New York? Um, the U.S. vote is not at all uh, unexpected. I mean, we we expected that the United States would veto uh, this resolution. They, they've said it. Uh, they've said all along that the only uh, possible way for a Palestinian state to emerge is through direct bilateral negotiations, uh, which means essentially that Israel has a permanent veto uh, over, uh, over Palestinian uh, self-determination. And so this is an attempt by Palestinians maybe to uh, do an end run around that principle. But I think even they understood that this was not going to, to pass. I think President Abbas has pursued this for, for his own reasons. I think he's looking more and more obsolete uh, given the destruction in Gaza. He's unable to influence either the military or the diplomatic uh, equation and is looking for some, uh, some way to be relevant. Dennis Ross, as I mentioned, some of this uh, effort by the U.S. to try and tamp down escalation in the region is economic. New sanctions announced on Iran today on Iran's drone program, Iran's defense industrial base, including steel production, the first time that those sanctions have been imposed in about three years. Does those kinds of actions help convince the Israeli government not to respond to Iran's attack with another military attack? Look, I think it probably helps, but I'm not sure it's enough. I think the Israelis would probably be more impressed uh, if we were closing some of the loopholes on sanctions as it relates to Iran being able to sell its oil. 91% of their oil sales are going to the Chinese. If we were doing more to basically prevent those sales, convincing the Chinese either not to go ahead or being prepared to sanction Chinese companies, that would probably be more impressive to the Israelis. Khaled al-Gindi, do you believe that President Biden is doing enough to try and influence Israeli behavior, whether toward Iran or in Gaza? Uh, well, I, I agree with Ambassador Ross that it's probably not enough to convince the Israelis not to uh, go off on their own uh, or or to you know to pursue a, a military response. Um, and I and I think they're going to leverage that. I think they're going to try and extract more uh, from the United States, quite possibly. Uh, up to and including the oil sanctions that uh, Ambassador Ross uh, mentioned. I mean, that would be definitely a game changer. 
uh, as far as Israel's decision making, but uh, we're, we're not quite there yet. Ambassador Ross, there are some Democrats who are wanting President Biden to use more leverage on Bibi Netanyahu when it comes to Gaza especially and condition military aid uh, uh, until Israel takes certain steps uh, when it comes to the war in Gaza. Do you believe the U.S. should condition military aid? No, I've not been in favor of conditioning military aid, especially right after Israel has just been targeted with more than 350 uh, cruise missiles, drones, and ballistic missiles. I think that would be the wrong signal to send right now, especially vis-a-vis -vis the Iranians and many of their proxies, including Hezbollah. Halil al-Gindi, do you believe that the U.S. can exert pressure on Israel, uh, especially when it comes to Gaza and how Israel wages that war, separate from how Israel uh, responds to Iran? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there, there's no question that the, the 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 lack of consequences is precisely why we have this humanitarian catastrophe uh, unfolding in Gaza, where we're now at the, you know, the the fastest uh, any population has reached the stage of famine in in recorded history. Uh, so there's a lot that the United States could do. It should, it can, and should condition uh, military uh, assistance. Um, at a very minimum, it could it could hold up the offensive weapons, the the massive uh, two thousand pound bombs that do uh, what President Biden called indiscriminate uh, damage uh, in, in Gaza and that have caused so much civilian death and suffering. So I think there are ways to to condition aid that don't necessarily affect Israel's ability uh, to uh, to launch, to mount a defense against uh, an Iranian threat. But that would inhibit its ability to continue to cause this mass uh, death and destruction in Gaza. Khalid Al-Gindi, Dennis Ross, thanks very much to you both. Sure. Good to be with you. Thank you.